guys, Adam with PCP Media. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I haven't done any videos lately because A, I felt sick, uh, and B, it's just been kind of hard to do something with uh, this coronavirus thing going on. So, in all reality, I'm less concerned about ooh, there we go coronavirus than I am the panic that is ensuing. We have. I mean, if you look at places like New York and other big cities, National Guard is being brought in. They're starting to put them under lockdown. And there's a good chance we may see that implemented next week nationwide. Uh, government overreach, obviously a big problem. But I'm also very, very concerned about what people are going to be doing as well. Uh, a lot of prisons are letting out criminals. Um, there's already been violence, a uh, food pantry in a place called Edding, Eddington, Edmonton. I think that was actually in uh, Great Britain. Um, that was had 400 pounds of uh, meat stolen from it. They caught the guy. But that's the type of stuff you're going to be seeing now. And then finally getting to where I really want to talk about today, HR 5717. Let's, let's talk about this. I have some notes about it. And to say it's bad, well, that would be an understatement. So this is not only a sweeping gun control bill, this is uh, probably the craziest one that has ever been introduced. Uh, so this is HR 5717. First, this would create a national gun and ammo license that you have to be 21 or over for. Uh, it would be illegal to even touch a firearm until you have gotten this license, which is also interesting because it requires a uh, uh, basically a shooting component. Uh, it's got some horrendous taxes, 30% tax on all guns, 50% tax on all ammunition. That would effectively double the price of ammunition. Mandates within two years that all gun sales would be tracked, AKA a gun registry. No private sales, no private transfers. Um, a seven day waiting period, red flag laws, a one gun a month policy, a safe storage requirement, and all sorts of requirements for that. Now, we also have the, of course, the regular old assault weapons ban, which would, uh, it's got tons of guns listed by name. You know, the semi-automatic guns, all the regular culprits that you would expect to be banned. Um, of course, magazine restrictions. Then you have uh, uh, a ban on uh 80% lower bills, like basically you can't build your own weapons, so not even just 80%, but uh, building your own firearms in general would be illegal, which uh, has not been illegal since this country was founded to make your own firearms. Then we have a ban on all suppressors, which by the way, President Trump has supported. President Trump has supported a ban on suppressors. Um, new security measures that would basically crush FFLs, um, you know, the gun <laughs> these small gun shops would just be hammered because it required uh just all sorts of expensive security features to be built into the buildings so so it gets worse though um we're going to expand gun free zones um now of course uh government officials military uh police are all not subject to these rules um funds research into gun violence so we're gonna be looking at fun new ways to ban firearms uh, from being owned by the people. And then it establishes um, a buyback program. Please forgive the noise, I had to put my notes away. It establishes a, ah, <laughs> these gimbals, man. Um, so it establishes a buyback program. Now the government never owned these weapons, so why do they get to buy them back? Isn't that a little bit of a misnomer? Uh, misnomer of the phraseology there. Um, so that in itself 
<laughs> it's ridiculous. So here's what they're doing with this. It would ban your assault weapons. You would then have to go through a mandatory gun buyback and buy assault weapon. They mean basically anything that is semi-automatic, uh, federal, red flag, red, federal red flag laws. <sighs> Guys, this is um, the never let an emergency, never let a crisis go to waste moment. The, you here are looking at some, <laughs> that is some good uh, tyranny right there. So since half of you guys are pretty much at home anyways, why don't you go ahead and take this time and use this time to contact your representative and tell them they need to vote no against this. Because in a time of fear mongering like this, uh, in a good old time of panic, people will be your legislature will be way more than willing to give your rights away. Okay? They they would absolutely love this. So, I'm not saying panic. I'm not saying go panic buy. Even though you've already done that, haven't you? The shelves for toilet paper and guns are now empty. <laughs> but contact your legislator. Let them know you will not accept this. You do not uh, approve. No, and... <laughs> Just spread the word. If Look, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Please hit the, the subscribe. And look, you've got to share this video with others. Make your own video on this if you think my video is, sucks. <laughs> but we've got to get the, this out there to the people so that everyone knows what we're doing with. We're all preoccupied with trying to avoid the sniffles where uh, when legislatures are trying to take our rights away. Uh, if you look at um, states around the country, you have... Um, Governors run amok with implementing the most tyranny that they can get away with. It's absolutely insanity right now what they are doing. So for those of you who believe in liberty and would rather have uh, the risk of freedom versus the safety of slavery, then get this message out there. Deuces.